Let's look into more factors that affect how quickly the liver can clear drug from the body using the well-stirred model. This time we're going to look at protein binding. Now in the equation it's represented by F sub P. In our analogy, protein binding is determined by the number of bar stools available. Many drug molecules, to a greater or lesser extent, bind to plasma proteins like albumin and alpha-1 acid glycoprotein. When the drugs travel through the liver, the drug molecules that are bound to proteins aren't metabolized. It's only the drug molecules that are floating around unbound that can be removed by the liver. The bound drugs can't diffuse across the hepatocyte membranes to reach the liver enzymes that metabolize them. For those drugs that are highly protein bound, hepatic clearance might change if something happens to the patient that reduces the amount of albumin in the blood. Less albumin means fewer places for the drug to bind and a higher proportion of drug unbound. It's as if we took away a bunch of bar stools and there's fewer places for people to sit. There's a higher proportion of patrons walking around free whom the bouncers will eject. There are situations where the pharmacists need to be careful dosing drugs in patients with low albumin concentrations. However, there really aren't that many situations where it's the changes in hepatic clearance due to the well-stirred model that are important. Having low albumin concentrations changes other things in the body that affect dosing much more so than changes in hepatic clearance due to the well-stirred model. Patients with very low albumin concentrations have large changes in how the water in their body is distributed to different compartments. This often causes significant changes to the drug's apparent volume of distribution. So while we may end up changing the drug dose, it's more because of the changes in volume of distribution than any changes in clearance predicted by the well-stirred model. Sometimes pharmacodynamic factors offset the changes in hepatic clearance. Naproxen is a highly protein-bound drug with a low extraction ratio. That's exactly the kind of drug we'd expect the rate of hepatic clearance would increase as a result of low albumin concentrations. However, only the unbound naproxen is pharmacologically active. So, while the patient with low albumin might be clearing the drug faster, which would make the total drug concentrations in the blood go down, more of the drug that's left is unbound and thus is pharmacologically active. The two effects largely cancel each other out. What is most important, actually, is not how low albumin concentrations affect the liver, it's how the liver affects albumin concentrations. Remember that the liver does many things besides removing drugs from the body. It's also the organ that manufactures albumin. When the liver doesn't produce enough albumin, it sets off a cascade of problems that can affect the pharmacokinetics of drugs. This includes changes in the drug's apparent volume of distribution and an increased fraction of unbound pharmacologically active drug. While we have to keep in mind the fraction of drug unbound while we use the well-stirred model, there really aren't that many situations where changes in clearance due to changes in protein binding cause us to have to change the drug dose.